Hey guys, Rico Rocks here. Today I'm going to be disassembling this Nintendo 64 Pokemon Edition. Now, several people commented on my N64 disassembly video saying that they want to see this one disassembled. And I apologize for not making this video as soon as possible, but as the saying goes, better late than never. Also, another thing, I actually have two of these special edition N64s. In fact, here's another one, for example. This is actually the Japanese one. It's supposed to be a lighter color, but unfortunately, it's discolored. As you can see, the inside where the expansion is, it's supposed to be a lighter blue than this. So, this basically discolored, but one of these days, I'm going to do a retro bite, uh, retro bright method and try to get this the original color. Also, the power switch you may notice is discolored. The white is yellow, and you know how it goes. I'll talk about this N64 in a different video, or showcase it in a different video. Huh? But right now, I'm going to disassemble this one. If you remember me disassembling a N64 in that other video, it would look something like this one. This is not the same one. This is a slightly later model. This is a 1998, well, 1997 model. Excuse me. Basically, the motherboard says 1996-97 on this one. The one that I did in the other video, I don't have with me anymore. I actually traded it with cash from a friend of mine. But aside from that, an N64 is an N64. So let's go ahead and disassemble it. Now, when you're disassembling an N64, you need to take out a jumper pack or expansion pack. If you buy the expansion pack, you'll have the tool that comes with it. But I don't have the thing. So basically, I'll just use... a uh, small enough tool that pries it out. You do the same with the jumper pack and you know how the rest goes. When you're finished when you take the expansion pack or jumper pack out, you then turn your system upside down and you're presented with six screws. I'll go ahead and jump cut the video up to show taking the lid off. So also when you open up an N64 or if you want to open one up you'll need one of these special security bits. It's called a game bits. You will not find this in a hardware store. You'll have to buy it online, whether Amazon or eBay. You won't be able to find it in a hardware store. Or you could try the Big Pen method if you want, though it's not that easy, so I say buy the bit online. So jump cut. On the special Pokemon N64s, the American ones, the Japanese ones, or even the European ones, it doesn't matter. They're all shaped like this. You're going to need to be careful because there's an extra wire hanging out right there. So you don't want to accidentally snap a wire off of either here or the motherboard because soldering it back in is kind of a pain in the you-know-what. So to disconnect it, you grab it right there, and then basically you're good to go. And let's take a look at the motherboard. It looks identical to your typical N64 motherboard, but it looks somewhat slightly different mainly because the heat sink is placed differently. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and cut the video and take apart a normal N64 and show you what its motherboard looks like, so bear with me. In fact, if you're wondering what the original N64 motherboard looks like, here's what it looks like without the top case. You may notice some differences. Aside from the LED, while this one here, it's on the board right there, this one uses an external connector soldered underneath one of the controller ports, that being this one. Another difference is how many the heat sink uh, is laid out on these later motherboards, or the really late motherboards. I like how the heat sink is placed on this one. It gives a much better perspective of keeping your N64 nice and cool. The older method basically had these extra eight screws right here, and you got two blocks underneath there that with that thermal pad and uh, that basically keeps the system cool. Both of them have the third one right there on that one. But this one, they basically made two holes right here and basically use this part of the heat sink to press with those thermal pads and uh, keeps the system cool that way. On these earlier ones, like I said, they have blocks on this one. So, when you're disassembling this N64, basically you have eight less screws to deal with. You don't have these four here and these four here. You do still have these two screws here, these two black ones, these two with the little nut thing around them. You also have um, every other screw on here. 
basically the two on the AV and the AC adapter, the two in the cartridge slot, the five around here, and the one down there. Don't worry about these two screws. That's just basically to keep these two metal pieces together. So when you're disassembling these two systems, don't worry about these two screws. They're not important. And I'll show you why in the video. So I'm going to do a jump cut and put back together my black N64 and show you what this N64 looks like without this metal shielding on here. So here we go. Okay, I took out all the screws except for these two, and I'm going to show you why you won't need to take out those two when you disassemble this N64. Well, at least later models that have this design with the heat sink. For my European viewers, your clear blue N64, the Super Mario Edition, will have an identical motherboard to this one. With the exception of the LED right there. And all Pokemon N64s, however, some Japanese ones, will have the block system like I've shown with the black N64. So let's go ahead and take out these pieces right here first so we can get to the motherboard. You have three pieces. One right there that fell out. One, another one that fell right over there. And this portion. Let's move these out of the way. And now let's take this board off. Or this heat sink off. There we go. See, you don't need to take these two screws off unless you need to clean this heat sink and this metal shielding. To do that, basically, you would need a pair of pliers to hold this side and a uh, screwdriver to hold this side. Taking it off is kind of challenging, but putting it back on, well, if you've done this several times like I have, it's simple. But if it's your first time doing this, don't bother with these screws. So that's all I have to say for that. And here is the N64 motherboard. It looks identical to all N64 motherboards, but the difference is this one says 2000 right there. Some of them say 1999, some say 2001, etc., etc. Basically, you have your two chips right there and your third, another chip underneath this guy right there. Older N64s, like the black ones, will have a second chip right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. Here is your power switch reset button. Also, if you want to put this motherboard into an older N64 shell like the black one or any of the fantastic colors, you can do that. Although you would need to take an LED off of another N64 and solder it right there and take this to put it on another N64. If you wanted to swap motherboards, you can do that. It's a bit challenging, but if you want to go for it, I say go for it. In fact, um, speaking of the uh, if you're wondering which, uh, where this is soldered to, it's soldered to these two points right there. If you accidentally broke a wire, the red one goes here and the black one goes right there. It's soldered to player four. And these are the controller ports. They all look to be in good condition and they all work perfectly. I've taken this apart and I've cleaned it several times. It works perfectly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the screws back in and basically reassemble it. All right, I reassembled the motherboard to the plastic bottom of the casing of the Pokemon N64. A few things I'd like to point out. Hopefully you'll remember which screws go where if you're wondering to reassemble. The, the silver ones go on the power connector and the AV cable. The shorter normal gold screws go right here, 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 and here, and one right there. Be sure this portion tucks in right there. The two short silverish or gold screws go right here. The ones with the washers around them go here. The two black ones go right there. And don't forget there's a plastic piece that, or a metal piece that needs to go right there. Also, one last thing. When you're putting the bottom portion with the wire right there, you want to be sure it's not pinching on the two uh, metal shieldings because that could damage the wire and you don't want to damage it too hard because finding a connector like this is not that easy. Or should I say, um, fixing it or whatever. Now that you got that portion taken care of, the one last thing you need to do is reconnect this portion, the top with the LED PCB port. 
parts. Excuse me, I had a brain fart. And basically, you connect the two like this, and then you place the top on like this. Now, before you reassemble it all together, I say test it out with a game, and then we'll see if it works. And don't forget to pop in the jumper pack slash expansion pack before you reassemble it, because otherwise it won't power on or display anything without the RAM because N64s need a jumper pack or expansion pack to play the games. So before you finish reassembling the screws, I say test it out with the games. Now before you reassemble the N64 completely, you want to test it out with a couple of games. Basically, I'm going to grab two games to test it out with. First, we're going to use Pokemon Puzzle League also known as Panel de Pond in Japan because Japan did not get Pokemon Puzzle League. They got Panel de Pond with Lip and a few other fairy-like characters. And to be honest, Panel de Pond looks like an awesome, fun version of Puzzle League, to be honest. So here's Pokemon Puzzle League, and it fires on. I'm going to go ahead and grab a second controller to prove that basically, well, we know this game works because it boots up like that. Now let's go ahead and grab Super Smash Bros. and test out all four controller ports. Super Super Smash Bros. Also to the people who wrote in the comments on my uh, video where I was testing out my black N64. They wrote in the comments saying, You idiot, don't blow on the cartridges. I just want to say, for the record, um, when I finished filming that video, I cleaned it with a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol, so don't worry. I know about blowing on the cartridges is a temporary fix and a horrible permanent fix. It leaves residue and stuff like that. I take very good game care of my games, so don't worry about this game dying on me. Because, like I wrote in the comments, I got the... Basically, everything working. Since this is a Pokemon N64, we're just going to select Pikachu and prove that basically it works perfectly. I wiggle the controller port, but nothing happened. Now I'm going to grab another controller and test it out. I got a new clear orange controller I found at a pawn shop. It was priced for um, basically a total of either seven, about eight dollars. Actually, no, it was ten dollars. It was definitely a good buy. <laughs> you can't go wrong with a good N64 controller. And basically, nope. This controller works also. I'm going to grab my Pokemon N64 controller and test that out. This is the matching controller that comes with that system. And let's select Pikachu. So far, hey, we're making progress here. And for player four, I'm going to use my special modified N64 controller. I'll make a separate video about this if anyone's interested. And, well, we have a winner. We get a fully functional N64. A good way to tell if your controllers are good, sometimes if you wiggle the solder joints that are soldered to the board, if any of the characters disappear and go back to a blank screen, you know the, something's wrong with the controller port solder to the board. You would need to put fresh solder to fix that. This console didn't need that, thankfully. But my other Pokemon N64 did. Ironically, it was Player 4 that was soldered to the LEDs right there, or Pikachu's cheeks. There's two of them right there, if you're wondering. So, there you have it. That's testing the N64. If it's fully functional, then you're good to go. That's my reassembly of well, disassembly and reassembly of the Pokemon N64. Now the last thing you need to do is use your game bit and put the screws back in. Or if you want to put regular Phillips screws in, they'll work fine as long as they fit in the slot perfectly. So that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching my N64 Pokemon Edition disassembly video. If you like what you see here, then feel free to write in the comments. If you want me to make a video on the Super Nintendo Disassembled or the Super Famicom, which I have, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to do that. I'm signing off. Have a nice day.